What's up beauties? So today's a pretty specific video, but one that I got the idea of talking to a client of mine whose friend is getting married destination. And she said that she wasn't sure if she should hire an artist to come out, if she should trust the resort staff to do it, or if she should just do it herself. So this video is for the last category. I'm going to be doing a full face of destination makeup for brides who want to do their own, but just want to learn some tips and tricks so that they can have the best looking makeup and makeup that will last the longest. So for some extra insurance, you're going to want to prime your face. I've primed with e.l.f. Primer Putty. And I like to apply my foundation with a damp beauty blender. I feel like this gives you the most flawless looking coverage without putting too much on your skin so it cakes up afterwards, which is important. You want to have just as much as you need. So for foundation, you want to use something that doesn't contain SPF because it will flash back in photography. My favorite is um, Makeup Forever HD Foundation, and this is what I use in my kit on everybody else. Uh, Makeup Forever does make two versions of this, one in cream and one in liquid. The liquid is better for destination because it's not as thick, so it will dry down a little bit more on your skin and you don't have to worry about um, taking the moisture out of it. So just put some makeup on the back of your hand, take your damp lake beauty blender and just dot it all over your face where you need coverage. So I'm just bouncing the foundation into my skin. Even if you have an exact match of foundation, it's really important to get it along your jaw, underneath your jaw, over to the full sides of your face and onto your ears for a coverage that's the most smooth because foundation can oxidize a little bit so even if it looks like the perfect match when you put it on, it can look a little bit off color between your own skin color once it dries down. So once you have a nice even coverage, you can move on to concealer. For concealer, I'm going to go in with MAC Pro Longwear. So for your concealer, you can start with a little brush. And if you're somebody who doesn't like a lot of coverage, you like a more natural skin look, you can just put it exactly where you need it to cancel out dark circles. Like that, and then blend it out. Um, for me, I like a more full coverage look, so I'm going to show you that way because if you do want just this look, you would just blend it out. So that's what you would do if you just wanted a look that was a little more natural, just to cancel out your dark circles. Me personally, I like to use concealer to sculpt the face a little bit. So I would bring the concealer a little down like I just showed you, and then buff it out. It's important to note that when you're blending out concealer, you want to tap with one end to get it blended and then go in with the clean end so that you're not adding any more, you're just buffing out the edge. And then I'm just taking a tiny bit of what's left of my concealer and I'm going to pop it on my chin and on my forehead and blending that out just to bring that highlighting throughout my face. The next step is to go on with setting powder and I highly recommend the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And you can go in with the same beauty blender, pick up some product, tap it off, and then press it into the concealer under your eyes. And don't blend it. So you're just pressing it in. It will start to melt into your skin and take the moisture out of your concealer, which is an absolute essential step to make sure your concealer doesn't start to melt and slide down your face and sink into your um, fine lines around your eye. After that, you can take a fluffy powder brush like this, lightly dip into the setting powder, and set your face. 
So you're just going over your entire face with the setting powder. If you touch it, it shouldn't feel tacky or wet to the touch. The powder should make it feel nice and smooth. And we're just going to leave this under the eye here. This is called baking. It has two purposes. The first purpose is that when we do your eyeshadow, if anything falls underneath your eyes, you don't have to worry about those products leaving marks underneath your eyes. And then the second thing is, is this is an area that it moves around a lot because your eyes are expressive. So this will make sure that you are very set underneath your eyes and you don't have to worry about it moving around. The next step is to go in with a matte bronzer. I like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit and my own makeup kit but you don't need to use this if you want to use something that's um, as long as it's a matte bronzer it's fine this is a good drugstore option this is the butter bronzer from physicians formula or you could also get the NYX contour kit which is sort of like a dupe for the Anastasia one I'll go ahead and use this one because this one is one that's accessible to you guys and you can find in the drugstore so you want to take Depending on your skin color, you want to take a tone that goes with your skin color and you can adjust that with having a tan. So I'm going to take this color here, which is the lightest one, and it's also not as orange so it's good to contour with because you won't look like you have, um, it's not too warm for your skin. Hopefully that made sense. So you want to put some on your brush, tap off the excess, and then you want to start literally in your hairline, right in your hairline. And just do tapping motions to deposit the product. If you've set your makeup with setting powder, this should go on very smoothly. A lot of people find trouble when they don't set their makeup and they try to do contouring because it will grab onto the product as you're trying to apply it and it'll look streaky or patchy. So you're doing right into your hairline along your temples and then you want to do in underneath your cheekbone you don't have to tap for that you can if you want to deposit more but you can do a soft sweeping motion and that will keep the contour looking very soft and then you can just build it as you need to then you can also take some contour powder and very very lightly just drag it along the bottom of your jaw and down your neck. All this does is it keeps the makeup looking like it's actually part of your body as opposed to makeup here, no makeup here, so you bring the same texture to face and neck. If you do go for a more heavily contoured look, I recommend putting some on your nose, not necessarily to contour your nose, but just to bring that warmth throughout your face. So you can even just take your brush and with nothing left on it except for what you already used and just run it down the sides of your nose. Or if you do want to contour, you can pinch so that it's thinner and just drag it down the sides of your nose closer to the top than the side so that it actually does narrow your nose a bit. The next step is blush. I'm going to be using this Pixie by Petra uh, Fresh Face Beach Rose Blush and I'm using this one because the color of it is a little bit bronzy so it would be good for destination. Uh, you can use whatever color you'd like and feel comfortable with, but if you are not somebody who has a pink undertone, I would recommend making sure that you use whatever is left on your blush brush at the end and just dragging it through your forehead, your nose, a couple other places just to bring that color sort of throughout your face so it gives a little more of a natural flush. So for blush, you put a tiny bit on your brush. You want a soft round brush like this. Um, and you don't want to put too much on at a time because blush can be hard to tone down if you do put too much on. And then you smile at yourself. And you look for that round apple of your cheek. You want to make sure it's far enough in, away from your nose that it doesn't make you look like you have a cold or something like that. So my tip is to smile at yourself, find the outside of your eye, and that's where you start. Like that. So deposit the color in backward sweeping motion so that your color is not just in a circle on your cheek.
and then without adding any other product, you do want to do some small circles backward to blend your contour and your blush together. And then taking your brush, like I mentioned, I haven't added any extra product to this. I would just take it along the edges of the contour closest to your eyebrows and add that just to bring a tiny little subtle cast of that color throughout your face. The next step is highlighting your face. I recommend the Cover FX. This is the Perfect Light Highlighting Palette. This one's really beautiful. Um, I Honestly, you could find lots of good highlighting palettes out there. I would just make sure you're testing it first to make sure it is one that you like the way it looks. So I'm just going in with color number three first. I think the best place for highlight is if you smile and you see the apple of your cheek, you want it along the top of this line here. Some people want to put it right here, close to the eye area. That's fine if that's where you like it. But placing it here will make it sh so that your face really lights up when you smile. You really see um, that highlight not just under your eyes, but when your face is moving. And then I'm going in with this other color, number four. So once you have that on, if you want to make it look a little more natural, you can take your highlighting brush, don't add any additional product, and just sweep it up and into the edge of your eyebrow brow bone. And that will ensure that when your face is moving, The highlight is catching not just the highlighted portion of your cheek, but also that area as well, which will make it look more natural. You can then take your highlighting brush and take a tiny bit of product and sweep your cupid's bow and along your nose. The next step is eyebrows, and you can do these one of two ways. You can go for an extremely natural brow, which is a personal favorite of mine. And just take a brow gel and brush that through your eyebrows in an upward motion to shape. If you have nice eyebrows, this is a beautiful option for destination because it will just give you some depth and um, some shape without adding a whole lot to them. If you don't have perfect eyebrows and you need to fill them in, I recommend a pencil for destination. This is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. And for gel, this is the Brow Stylist by L'Oreal. To fill in your brows, you're gonna want a pencil like this if you don't have this exact one because it has a very fine tip. So you can do either underlines, top and bottom, or if you're not feeling that savvy, you absolutely can just fill in where you think you need it. So after you have a base laid down for your brow, it's important to go in and get a brush to soften any of those lines and also so you can get a better look to see where you need more or if you've added too much somewhere, then you can just take a spoolie brush like this and just give it a little wiggle and that will take off the excess. So you can just build little by little like I'm doing. I brush, I take a look, brush, take a look. And then once you're happy with that, leave it be or take some brow gel and brush up. Brushing up is the most flattering. Having those little hairs um, standing at attention will definitely give your face more of a lift. If you don't like the way that looks, that's fine too. But just make sure you're brushing up and then in. The next step is to prime your eyelids and this step is essential because it will give your eyeshadow something to stick to and it will make the colors more vibrant and uh, will make it last for the day. So I recommend Max Painterly Paint Pot or any paint pot that suits your skin color and just do a light coat over your whole lid. This is also a good time to fix any mistakes you might have made doing your eyebrows if you need to because you can use the paint pot to just gently carve underneath. 
Okay, so the next step is eyeshadow. And I'm going to be using the Soft Glam palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It is a really good neutral palette. But um, I'll also just be telling you like the general description, the color name, so that you guys can decide whether that's what you wanna buy or you can just try to match it to another color that's similar. Okay, so starting with a small detail brush, you want to go in with a lighter color to highlight your brow bone. So for this palette, I'm going to be using Tempura, but you could go in with any highlight shade, including the highlighting palette you used. Okay, so next you want to go in with a blending brush like this. And I'm going in with Orange Soda from this palette, um, but you just want to go in with any light transition color, something that's close to skin color for you, but is just a little bit richer, a little bit darker that will be able to blend your highlighting shadow into your crease. And you're just going to use back and forth windshield wiper motions. And this is just above your crease. Your crease is here where your eye actually creases and you're blending just above that. And you just want to build that slowly. As the color runs off your brush, use it to blend off your edges and then go back in and get more. So what I mean by that is, now that I've deposited most of the color that was on my brush, I'll take the same brush, not add any more, and just slowly work my way up toward the color I'm blending it into, now that I know that there's no color to deposit there. Like that. So the next step is to take something that's slightly darker than your transition shade. In this palette I'm using Burnt Orange, but for you, if you're not using this color, you just want to use something that's like a mid-tone brown that is similar to the color that you just used, but getting darker because we're building intensity. And for this color, we're not going to go as high up, you want to keep it to the crease. So instead of putting it just above the crease, you're going to go right into the crease. The next step that you want to do is take that same brush that you were just using and go in with that same color that you just had, a little tiny bit on your brush, and drag it underneath your lower lash line. Next you want to take a little brush like this, this is called a pencil brush, and you want to pick up a little bit of a dark brown shade, or this is where you can vary away from what I'm doing a little bit. I'm going to stick with browns because I feel like that's what most brides want. But if you wanted to use like a cranberry, or if you wanted to use um, a black or anything like that, then you could. So I'm going to go in with Cypress Umber from this palette. You could go in with any color that you choose to deepen with. And then you're just going to place it at the outer, I would say, fifth of your eye on the lid. Just tap to lay down that color. And then once you're sure that your brush doesn't have any color left on it, you can tap inwards a little bit. And then go back in with your blending brush with nothing on it and just buff off the edge into your crease again and the edge of where it laid down on the inside. Now I'm taking a packer brush and I'm using the color Glistening from this palette, but you just need any color that's a highlight shade. Again, you could use the highlighting color from your highlighting palette. Any color that's a highlight shade, and this one's a sort of light gold. I'm taking it on here and I'm just going to place it on my lid then pull down. All the way up to that brown. And then once you have that color laid down, I'm going to go in with rose pink, that's another metallic, and pick up a bit of it. And I'm going to only lay it down between the brown and the gold, just as a blending color. And then go back in with your same blending brush and just sweep back and forth to make all those colors marry together a little bit at the edges. 
The last thing you can do with the shadows, and this is optional, is to take that little brush you did with the brown again, and you can take a teeny tiny little bit of it, tap it off, and drag it underneath. Again, just at the outer bit. Just to connect the top and bottom. If you're a, a very natural bride, if you are happy with this, you could absolutely stop here and just put on mascara. But I'm going to go in with the Fenty Fly Liner and line my lids as well. The last step is mascara. And you want to make sure you're coating the top of your lashes too, so that if any powder has fallen there, that you're making it dark so that they blend nicely. And for your bottom lashes, you don't want to add too much volume to them, but you do want to tint them so that they match your top and bottom. So just touch them to your mascara. And then dust off your bake. You actually could have done this before mascara. The last step is lipstick keep saying the last step and it really never is. Next is lipstick. I'm going to be going in with the Huda Beauty Icon liquid lipstick. The last step and the most essential is setting spray. This is Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. I use this in the tropics and I would wake up in my makeup when I forgot to take it off. This will cut down on the powder-ryness of your look too if you have any areas that you feel like are very powdery. So I feel like under my eyes looks a bit powdery right now so I really concentrated it there as well. And then the other thing you can do is after your setting sprays had a chance to permeate for a second, take your beauty blender on a clean side and just bounce over any areas that you feel look a little powdery. That's it you guys. This is your destination wedding look and you really could customize this in a few different ways to make it more you. Um, I hope this helps you guys that are going away to get married and you can't bring somebody to do your makeup or you just want to do it yourself. If you guys do use this look when you get married, make sure you leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it and I'll see you guys on the next one.